Example 3, the weighted voting system with a quota of 6. The players have weights of 4, 3, 2, and 1. We want to determine the shapely shubic power distribution and compare it to the Banzaf power distribution, which we found in an earlier video. Here we have all of our sequential coalitions that we can create, and we're going to add one player in at a time, and the first player added in that causes the coalition to win will be our pivotal player. So with the first sequential coalition, players 1, 2, 3, and 4. Player 1 has a weight of 4. We still haven't met quota, so we add in player 2. Player 2 has a weight of 3, and 4 plus 3 is 7, and player 2 causes it to be a winning coalition, so player 2 is our pivotal player. Next, a sequential coalition with players 1, 2, 4, and 3. Player 1 has a weight of 4, player 2 has a weight of 3, and player 2 is the player that causes this to be a winning coalition, so player 2 is our pivotal player. Next, the sequential coalition with players 1, 3, 2, and 4. Player 1 has a weight of 4, player 3 has a weight of 2, and now we've met our quota, so player 3 is our pivotal player. The sequential coalition with players 1, 3, 4, and 2. Player 1 has a weight of 4, player 3 has a weight of 2, and now we've met the quota, so player 3 is our pivotal player. The sequential coalition with players 1, 4, 2, and 3. Player 1 has a weight of 4. Player 4 has a weight of 1. We still have not met quota, and so we add in player 2 with its weight of 3. And now we have a total of 8, which meets the quota, and so player 2 is our pivotal player. Next, the sequential coalition with players 1, 4, 3, and 2. Player 1 has a weight of 4. Player 4 has a weight of 1, and again we have not reached quota, so we add in player 3 with their weight of 2, and now we have a total of 7, which meets quota, and so player 3 is pivotal. The sequential coalition with players 2, 1, 3, and 4. Player 2 has a weight of 3, player 1 has a weight of 4, and we've met quota, so player 1 is the pivotal player. The sequential coalition with players 2, 1, 4, and 3. Player 2 has a weight of 3. Player 1 has a weight of 4. We've met quota, and so player 1 is our pivotal player. The sequential coalition with players 2, 3, 1, and 4. Player 2 has a weight of 3. Player 3 has a weight of 2. This is only 5, so we haven't met quota, and so we add in player 1 with a weight of 4. And now we have a total of 9 meeting quota, and so player 1 is our pivotal player. The sequential coalition with players 2, 3, 4, and 1. Player 2 has a weight of 3. Player 3 has a weight of 2. This is only 5, which doesn't meet quota, so we add in player 4 with a weight of 1. And now we have a total of 6, which meets quota, and so player 4 is our pivotal player. Next, we have players four, sorry, players two, four, one, and three. Player two has a weight of three. Player four has a weight of one. This is only four, which does not meet quota. So we add in player one, who has a weight of four. And now we have a total of eight, which meets our quota. And so player one is our pivotal player. Next, the sequential coalition with players two, four, three, and one. Player 2 has a weight of 3. Player 4 has a weight of 1. This is only 4, which does not meet quota, so we add in player 3 that has a weight of 2. And now we've met quota, we have exactly 6, and so player 3 is our pivotal player. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and fill in who the pivotal player is for the last half of these sequential coalitions. And then when you finish doing that, start the video back up and check to see if you get the same thing as I do. So now I have the rest of the table all filled in, so go ahead and pause the video again and just check to make sure that you have all of this correct. So for the sequential coalitions with P3, 1, 2, and 4, you should have 
um, the pivotal player P1 three, for the sequential coalition with players 3, 1, 4, 2, it should be player 1. For P3, 2, 1, 4, it should be player 1. For P3, 2, 4, 1, it should be player 4. For P3, 4, 1, 2, it should be player 1. For P3, 4, 2, 1, it should be player 2. For 4, 1, 2, 3, it should be player 2. For 4, 1, 3, 2, it should be player 3. For 4, 2, 1, 3, it should be player 1. For 4, 2, 3, 1, it should be player 3. And for 4, 3, 1, 2, it should be player 1. And lastly, 4, 3, 2, 1 should be player 2. So once you have all of those correct, then the next thing that we need to do is determine how many times each of these players was pivotal. So for player 1, Player 1 was pivotal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. Player 2 was pivotal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. Player 3 was pivotal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. And lastly, player four was pivotal one, two times. And then we also need our total. And 10 plus 6 plus 6 plus 2 gives us a total of 24. And lastly, we need to make up our fractions. So P1 was pivotal 10 times out of a total of 24, so that's 10 24ths, and we want to write that in reduced form. And both 10 and 24 are divisible by 2, so that would give us the fraction 5 twelfths. Player 2 was pivotal 6 out of 24 times, so that would be the fraction 6 24ths. Both 6 and 24 are divisible by 6, that gives us 1 fourth. And player 3 was also pivotal 6 times, so that's also 1 fourth. And lastly, player 4, 2 out of 24, and so that reduces down to 1 12th. We also wanted to compare this to the Banzaf power distribution. And if you go back and take a look at what we got when we used the Banzaf power distribution, you'll see that it was exactly the same. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I hope you're having a great day.